Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Steve Boy. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Real quick, I haven't done this in a while, but it's been on my mind today. If any of you out there are maybe a little down and out, you just need somebody to talk to, well, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'd be happy to go back and forth, text, call, jump on a phone, Zoom call, whatever. We can talk about whatever you'd like. Just know I'm a resource for you if need be. And I mean this sincerely, one of the coolest parts of this whole thing for me the past few years has been actually getting to know some of you and interacting with some of you. So honestly, don't ever hesitate to reach out. I may not get back to you right away, but I will get back to you. Monroe did upload a video today going over the Cybertruck interior photo we already talked about. It's really one of those videos you just have to watch to understand it to try to get into the minds of Monroe and Tesla and how they're thinking about certain design choices. But I'm sharing because my biggest takeaway is what I said when the picture came out. What we saw is most likely not going to be the final version, so withhold judgment. We have the Edison Electric Institute event coming up June 11th through the 13th in Austin. And if you scroll down and look at the keynote speakers, you'll see Tuesday morning, Elon Musk. I'd also love to hear from Coach Prime. He's the man, if you didn't know. I know at least a few of you are out there near Austin, so here's the registration info if you're interested, and the JW Marriott is a fancy hotel. We just got an update from Panasonic after their annual strategic meeting on their plans for battery production. Before we dive into the update, I just wanna make it clear this third battery plant has actually been known now for some time, so it's really not news. But the update is that Panasonic is planning to make that third battery site in North America official by March of next year. So number one will be Giga Nevada with Tesla. Number two is the DeSoto site in Kansas under construction now. Drone pilots wanted if you're near DeSoto, by the way, email me if you're interested. That site is starting with 2170s, mostly for Tesla, and then the third site will be upcoming announced next March. Over the next eight years or so, we have Panasonic looking to go from 50 gigawatt hours of production and procurement capacity to 200 gigawatt hours. Not only more cells, but improved cells as well. Improvements will be applied to a next gen version of the 2170 cylindrical and the upcoming 4680. There's no word on the location for this third site, but they did say it's set to be the same size as the DeSoto factory that's being built now, which will be 30 gigawatt hours. We talked about the 2170s starting in Kansas, and they currently have a pilot line of 4680s in Japan. They paused that actual commercial production until later next year. But they confirmed those Japan-made 4680 batteries will be shipped to a North American customer. Panasonic also confirmed that 4680s might make their way to the DeSoto factory in Kansas as well. I won't spend much time here, but City just updated their Mindshare tracker, which is essentially just tracking internet search traffic for electric vehicles. The takeaway, Tesla has consistently experienced significant net inflows from all automakers, particularly after the price cuts in April. Among Tesla's total visits, the strongest net inflows came from Hyundai Kia, Volvo, and GM. Let's have a look at a few graphs from Victor at EV Volumes. This one, Tesla's share of the global light vehicle market. Of course, steadily trending up over time, but I want you to keep in mind this number, Tesla's goal at least, is to eventually hit around 20%. Tesla says they wanna do 20 million a year. Well, I have them at 15 million and maybe the overall auto sales annually shrinks from 80 or 90 million down to 70 million, which would put us around 20%. So just don't let it be lost on you that we're currently at 2%. So if you're feeling like you missed the boat or it's too late to get into Tesla, I would just tell you, just look at this chart alone. Here we have the global EV adoption market share percentage, not just Tesla, but just crossed that 10% mark quarter one of this year. Also of note, typically each quarter one, you see a stark decline after quarter four, but not this year, that trend was broken. So maybe it's the Inflation Reduction Act tax credits, maybe it's more EVs being available. Either way, it's a great sign for the rest of the year. And I hesitate to share this one because this is the one Elon and team have said, we're not really thinking about that at all. It's Tesla's share of the global EV market. But I'm sharing because I think it's an awesome reminder. Over the last five, 10 years, people have been saying, competition is coming, Tesla's losing its EV market share, all of the headlines. Well, in all actuality, zoomed out from a global perspective, Tesla's global EV market share is actually up from where it was back 
in 2019. So yeah, at the end of the day, this metric really doesn't matter that much, but it's not like you can't learn anything from it. Here's the simple takeaway. One out of every five EVs sold around the world is still a Tesla. One out of every 10 cars sold globally is now an electric vehicle. And one out of every 50 cars of any type sold globally is a Tesla. Just in case you're not aware right now, a big reminder over the next year or so, one of the biggest points of contention for Tesla stock will be, is it an AI company? And if so, how much valuation should be attributed to it now? Yes, it's impossible to answer, but you have people like Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley saying that Tesla's valuation will be dominated only by the supply and demand of EVs over the next year, saying Tesla can be considered many things, but we think it's an auto company. The reason I'm sharing this now is to remind you that there will most likely be a ton of volatility in Tesla stock over the next six to 12 months not just macro factors, but now we have this huge conversation of nobody really knowing how much value to give Tesla stock from an AI standpoint. And right now that's all of the craze in the market. And don't forget, Tim Cook described autonomous cars as the mother of all AI projects. And this is the point Elon always tries to hammer home that from that perspective, autonomous driving, he cannot see second place with a telescope. And that doesn't even touch on Optimus or how Tesla uses AI in the car or in the factory or in every aspect of its business. And on top of that, we have Dojo and Tesla now hiring for an LLM engineer for a large language model, which is more generative type AI. So yeah, I don't know how much value valuation it should be given, but I know the answer is not zero. In case any of you have been waiting for the Model S Plaid track mode, well, today, June 2nd, is your lucky day. Here we have a picture of some castings outside of Giga Texas from Joe Tetmeyer's drone flyover. Word on the internet right now is this could be a group of rear castings for the Cybertruck. I can't confirm it, just wanted to pass it along. And real quick, if any of you plan to buy a Cybertruck and you're thinking you may be one of the first ones to buy one and ultimately get one, please shoot me an email, I have a question for you. This isn't news, but it's a guide I think you may want to have bookmarked, just a list of Tesla shortcuts and some you may not know about, it'll be linked below. From Drive Tesla Canada, Tesla now has its second showroom on tribal lands in New Mexico. The first one, they took over an existing casino. This one, they're building from the ground up. And what's cool, Tesla is also partnering with the Pueblo of Santa Ana to provide workforce training in science, tech, engineering, arts, and math, education outreach at local high schools. Mary Barra spoke at a conference today, and to everybody saying there's no profitable future in autonomous driving, she said, you're wrong. Saying there's a giant growth opportunity, and she predicted personal self-driving cars would be on the market before the end of the decade. She also reiterated that crews will be generating $50 billion every year in annual revenue in the next seven years, Bear in mind right now, it's losing about $2 billion every year. Dubai and Japan are among future markets for crews, as well as expansion into goods delivery and personal autonomous vehicles. And what do we have here? Maybe the quote of the year. Mary Barra acknowledged that Tesla has the lead in EV technology, profitability, and scale, but said that lead is not permanent. So she finally admits to not being the leader in EVs. I wonder what Joey Biden has to say about this comment from Mary. And for as much flack as we give GM and Mary Barra, they also announced this. They're saying their partnership with POSCO is now expected to exceed $1 billion, which is primarily for Altium's cathode active material, production in North America. Now sure, it's a joint venture with another company and mostly that other company will be doing most of the developing while we have Tesla now setting up its own cathode facility in-house at Austin. We can't expect that from GM, but what we can and should celebrate is more of the battery supply chain coming from Asia to North America. Today really must be a special day because this is something that Tesla needs to copy from GM. This space may look like a showroom floor for GM's electric vehicles, but it's not. It is actually General Motors EV Live Studio, where an EV Live specialist seen here interacts over the internet with anyone curious about EV technology. The free live tour is a conversation driven by customers. This studio, which is in our secret location, was entirely built, purpose-built, to educate people on those questions. 
Tell me if I'm crazy on this one, but I think it would be awesome for Tesla to copy GM here and have a little secret location where maybe on the website, people can go and schedule one of these free sessions to actually chat real time with a representative from Tesla, explaining and answering any questions they may have. You can ease customers' concerns. You can build relationships. It's a feature that friends would tell their friends about. Oh, I just learned X, Y, and Z from Tesla's rep on this free call. I could go on and on, but I think it's great. China is not yet confident its economy is on solid footing, and in response, they may extend and optimize NEV purchase tax exemptions. They're considering this for NEVs for another four years. One of the measures may be extending the purchase tax break for EVs and hybrids that cost less than 300,000 yuan or about $42,000. New energy vehicles in China now have been avoiding that 10% purchase levy that other vehicles have seen for almost a decade now, but that is set to expire at the end of this year. So this is not official yet, but this of course would be great for Tesla. Here we have a recall for the Jaguar I-Pace covering 6,300 vehicles, and there really have not been been that many produced. The problem, battery fires, and the culprit sounds like LG. Dealers will have to, if necessary, replace the affected battery module or pack. Stellantis and GM have paid fines totaling $363 million in penalties for failing to meet US fuel economy requirements. Of that amount, $128 million was from GM covering cars from 2016 and 2017. Previously, GM had not paid a cafe penalty in the 40 year history of the program. GM had initially planned to use credits to meet its compliance shortfall, but instead opted to pay penalties. It's the first time in three years the agency NHTSA has collected fuel economy penalties because NHTSA runs the CAFE program. Right now, there's a lot of buzz in the market about this one. <laughs> Bad jokes aside, here we have the LWB long wheelbase version of the ID Buzz coming to the United States market. No word yet on price. It'll have a 91 kilowatt hour battery pack, no official EPA range, but the guess is around 260 miles. The word is they may only have production capacity of about 100,000 of these per year. So the demand is going to be very high for this vehicle. Will there be huge dealer markups? How is VW going to handle this? They're still answering those questions. Would any of you guys ever consider buying an ID Buzz? Let me know. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.